So how much force does a cam push outward on the rock? Let me show you why I care. So my last piece is pretty far down and so I want this one to count. But when I get in here, that sounds bad and that sounds bad. And so I wanna know if I take a whipper and I get 4K in on something like this, is that gonna put four times the force outward, which is 16K in, which is a whole lot of K in on this. And so that's what we're gonna figure out in this video. So let's calculate the forces this would create. This looks like a circle, but it's actually logarithmic, they say. The angle from the axle to where it touches the rock stays the same no matter how much you squeeze it, they say. Even though the cam gets smaller, the more scared I am, the math doesn't change. Let's go over it. It's simple. The nonlinear dynamic equations are derived from the inherent synergy between the cotangent force distribution and the bifurcation of angular factors, naturally constrained by the equilibrium state of a non-deformable surface. The force function modulated by the harmonic oscillations within a confined angular displacement interacts logarithmically with the intrinsic elastic modulus of the cam's alloy. Now stick with me, stupid. We're simply applying the parametric force fields through the multi-axis rotational vectors, leveraging the principles of elastic deformation and the anisotropic material properties. The resulting output is the tangent derived force distribution across a pseudo rigid body. Now the math is so simple that we had a discord group discuss it and it only took 280 comments for them to converge into the final equation that we will be able to use in this video. Now to oversimplify it, we had about two buckets of people. We had people who thought it was gonna be four times the force and people who thought it would be two times the force, meaning that if I pull one kilonewton down, that we would have two kilonewtons pushing outward on the rock. Now there are two main ways that you can look at this. You can look at a single lobe and you can look at the axis point to the contact point on the rock and play with triangles or you can look at two sides at the same time, and fortunately you can come up with the wrong answer doing it either way. Now what I like what happened in that Discord group is two things I've never seen before. One is people were nice to each other, and two, people changed their mind. And having healthy conversations online leads us to this formula right here. So we can now calculate the force that this cam puts outward on the rock. Now this symbol right here is the angle of the cam. And so how do you measure cam angles? So in order to measure this lobe, the axle is right here. And luckily this wild country cam is hollow. And so I'm going to take this nail and I'm going to put it in there. Now that this axle is stationary, I'm gonna keep this straight. We're gonna squeeze the cam. And the contact point for this is going to be about right here. And if I over cam it, then is going to be about right there. So now let's draw some lines all the way out. And technically these were supposed to be on the same line. So let's see what we're looking at. So the protractor is lined up on the dot and lined up on the line. And so we can read here that that's like 11 and a half. This looks like 15 and a half. This is harder than it looks. So plotting a few dots on a piece of paper is not going to give me my cam angle as easily as I thought. See a theme going on here? Luckily, Wild Country has published their cam angle at 13.75 degrees. That is roughly in between the two dots I have, which means this is either not perfectly logarithmic or the ink on my plastic protractor has not been calibrated this week. Now, other manufacturers have published or have had published their cam angles. And so you can see that they're anywhere from 13.25 to 14.5 degrees. Now there are exceptions to this rule and we will get more into those later, but we will make sure that those angles are in the tech specs in the product pages at hownotto.com where you can buy cams because this video is about to get real expensive real fast when we start pulling on stuff. Another thing you might find helpful is having engineering drawings of every single cam so you can see what they actually are since we measured them ourselves with calipers. Because the size charts comparing different brands to each other may or may not be as accurate as you might think, but that is an entirely different video. Now that we have the angle, Let's do some calculations to see what that formula says the force will be. Let's do some math. Force on the cam could be a gentle whipper at two kilonewtons divided by two times tangent of 13.75 and close that up. And that gives us a little over double or 4.08 kilonewtons on the rock. Now, not all cams have the same logarithmic angle. So how does that affect the force? If you plot all of these angles out onto a graph, you can see that a one degree cam that would look really funny and have no range puts over 20 times the amount of force outward on the rock than you pull down on it. Now, if you go to the other end of the spectrum, once you pass 25 degrees, you would have a ton of range and that cam wouldn't hold but it starts to put on less than one times the force that you're pulling down 
outward on the rock. Now, if you punch into the most normal cam angles, you'll notice that it's slightly above two times the force outward, all the way to, if you had an 18 degree angle, one and a half times the force outward. But now I can feel the friction in the comments from the people who want to talk about the coefficient of friction. But as long as the cams are holding and the tests we're about to do, nothing sliding around, friction is not relevant to how much force is going that way. Friction is relevant to whether or not it slides out, which is another episode we are going to do. But that's not what this one's about. What this episode is about is whether or not you can identify if this placement is dangerous or not. So here doing some alpine trad, we have a block that is attached up here and it's attached sort of good enough. And I don't like that. That was for the thumbnail. I'd personally place a little bit higher because that makes me warmer and fuzzier, but is that gonna come off? Well, if I were to take a whipper on this, well, I'd probably hit that ledge right there. But if I did, and I put four kilonewtons on this, which would be a hard whipper, that's a thousand pounds of force. That's 2,000 pounds at two times outward force. Do you think this could hold 2,000 pounds? I think that's good to know. This is also important when you build anchors. Two climbers fell, and one person actually died at Taylor Falls, Minnesota, where they built their anchor in a single crack and when that boulder that it was in moved a little all the cams came out you got to know how much force is being pushed outwards or at least understand roughly what's going on with that so you can make good judgment calls when you're either placing gear for pro or building anchors now as much as i like to trust i'm gonna verify my buddy lucas made me this jig and we are going to find out how much force cams actually put outward on the rock. Let me show you how this is built and why. The cam's gonna go in like this and we're gonna pull out towards me and we're going to be able to read how much force this lever is seen, which is obviously not the force down here. We'll get into why that is in a minute. The way this is built is there is a triangle inside of here because the way the line scale three is built. The line scale three's eye is convenient for rigging, but you don't wanna put something in there and grab like this. You're not gonna get an accurate measurement. It is designed for something with a 10 millimeter pin pulling evenly right here. And that is what this is for. The other parts of the triangle are to keep it stable so it stays centered here. You can see that this is on a lever and the whole reason we did this is because we thought there was gonna be 4X the force and if I wanna pull this to failure and I can get 15K in out of this, I didn't wanna see 60K in on the line scale three because it's only good for up to 30 before you start damaging things. And I'm really tired of damaging line scale threes. I've done it way too much on this channel. So the grand unveiling of this is computer parts. So the way this is built is it's nice and loose. So this will lever out without too much interference from friction. And the way this is set up is from the center of this bolt to here is about 75 millimeters. And if you go from the center of this up to here, you're about 75 millimeters. So this is in between these evenly. So after getting this peer reviewed on YouTube and Discord, this machine should see, if I'm pulling 2K in on this cam, this should be seeing half of that force. Again, why do math assumptions when we could just pull on stuff? So I put these slings right in the middle there. You can see how the sling goes around our eyes in the back, which these will be pulling dead center of our entire jig here. And we are gonna pull this up to four kilonewtons and we're gonna see if it reads two kilonewtons here. Now my hydraulics are kind of an all or nothing machine, the way they're set up. And so we are going to use this nine to one pulley system to pull slow and controlled. And it's so easy for my hand to get 4K in in order to do these tests. So we pulled a little above four kilonewtons. So we should be seeing at least two, and that's pretty close. There is a lot happening here. Not only do we have a load cell rated for 100 kilonewtons and one for a 30, and they operate really well the closer you get up to what they were made for. So playing with both of these at four kilonewtons is one variable. The other variable is how I'm pulling on that with the sling. I think it's pretty close. There's a lot going on there. And our lever machine could be doing some weird stuff that I don't understand right now, but it is super close enough. Let's pull on a cam finally. So these eyes are mostly lined up with the load cell. These slings are pulling straight. We've clipped this in a way that it's not gonna twist the cam weird. And we are set at zero and we're going to place this as centered as possible. So if this is four kilonewtons, this was eight and we only got three here. And so I got 2.6 times the outward force than I pulled. 
which is more than I was supposed to get with that logarithmic angle thingy. So the definition of insanity is doing the same thing again and expecting a different result. So we got up to four again. This time we got to three and a half. Now I'm all for backyard science, but I really want to know what this number is. And I want to be able to test different cams. And so Matt from Bolted Down Under sent me a very interesting video that you're going to want to see. Oh, you, know, you know how it goes. You might wrap down a new line, you find a sweet looking cam placement, and then you realize, oh, it's actually not a splitter. It's just a big block. And I always wanted to get a rough estimate, at least, of how much force I might be putting on some of these blocks with cams. So I built a little rig to try and work it out. So my rig is a little different. We've got a hydraulic ram at the top. We've got a load cell in the tension and we've got a cam down there. And then that's a compression load cell on the side there. So when the cam expands, it presses on both sides and that one gets the measurement. Two indicators down here. Blue one is the tension and the red one is that sideways compression, that normal force. And I tested these three cams, the gold, the blue and the silver C4 Camelots a few times each with a few different gap sizes. So let's see how that looks. 1.9 to 1. 98, 190, 76, 61, 105, 103. And the results from all that pulling are right here. So basically loaded it up to about body weight, around 100 kilos. The outward force, more or less, turned out about double. So for me, the important thing was the ratio. And if we look at all those ratios, averaged up 1.94 to 1. And I've plotted all of the pulls here by ratio. So we can see basically every single pull had an outward force just under double the pulling force. And I also found that when the cam was tipped out like this gold one at 55 millimeter gap, that ratio decreased. So it wasn't able to push outwards quite as much. So there you go, Frothers, that is my take. I reckon you're gonna end up with about a doubling of the pulling force from a regular kind of cam. Anyway, Ryan, back to you, mate. Let's see what else you got. So I'm inspired by Matt's design, having the load cell in line with the actual cam. Now we've had this cam crusher design for a while where we can put individual plates in there and we screw tight the Frankenstein ears in order to change different angles and stuff, but I've never been able to have a compression load cell inside of there. And Climbing Taiwan recently sent me these 50 kilonewton load cells, and he reminded me that these S-beam load cells go both ways. You can pull the S apart, or you can compress it together. So can we get this to fit inside of that? you like to see how we put this together with nothing but the stuff I had available here at the house? Because like half my tools are still at the store since we just moved to a new location. Let me show you how this works. Inspired by this design, this is C-channel welded to some C-channel with some angle iron down here. And that keeps it very rigid with the inside plates that we put in here being the variable. And that fixture allows us to have different plates like this one has a knurling on here. If you just do this back of the panel, the cams would slide right out. So friction is a factor we're just not talking about in this video. And we have different rocks that we can put on there like limestone or sandstone. And so if you use your imagination, this is basically the same thing but with load cells inside of it. Whereas we can take these plates and we can experiment with either different rock types for the friction video or we can have tapered ones later. What I think is important is to have this pushing very evenly against this load cell. There were a couple spots in Matt's video where that there was a little cockeyed and I don't know how much that affects the test and we wanted to have a load cell on both sides in order to see that it is even on both sides especially when we start pulling unevenly. I like the way these eyes hold this load cell right in the middle. It's just enough to hold it up. And then on the back side, we have equalized three leaper hangers, because that's funny. That paint stir stick is probably just gonna come right through my face over here. Oh my God. Before we can really explore the numbers, we gotta keep this thing from lifting up. I've gotta move this. This needs to stop doing this. I don't think the paint stir stick is supposed to be that shape. We have the plates I was just bragging about, so it doesn't slip here anymore. We have the same thing reading on both sides. And we got this more in line. And so therefore we got half of the outward force that we are seeing here. Now, if that same cam is tipped out, we get a force multiplier of 1.96. We pulled until our rock got about 0.8 on either side and we got 0.42 here. So 
about half. And if I'm scared and overcam it, I still get a force multiplier of 1.98. Now, what do we get if we use a cam with a 14.5 degree angle like Black Diamond's Camelots? Starting out with it over cammed, we got a force multiplier of 1.89. Then when we put it in normal, it was slightly above two. And with it tipped out, we also got 1.88. 1.53, 1.56, 0.85, 0 0.85, 0.82. So our fixture is super good enough for now to confirm that it's two times the force for a cam. Or is it? Now we have an entire episode where we were testing the angel cam and we learned that it is extremely bomber when it holds. If you look at the way this is constructed, the lobes are pivoting on an axle, which is pivoting on an axle. It's like axle inception. With a gentle one kilonewton whipper, we're getting about two kilonewtons on our rock. And that's about double. When it's straight up and down, and if we expand it all the way, we can't fit it in because of these arms in our thing we made out of the garbage in my garage. So we'll have to save that one for another one. But that was interesting. What else is interesting is this Trango Max Cam. This is a older cam that somebody donated for science, and it's got one of the lobe's axles on the other lobe. 1.6. Oh, the leaper hanger came out. We learned what the MBS of this thing is. So the outward force was 1.8 seven and the line scale three was 1.05 so that's about 1.6 times the force outward now one of the benefits to these is that it has a bigger range and that's what you get when you get a bigger angle but when you have that bigger angle and you get that bigger range you lose the outward force which would probably come into play with the coefficient of friction we're not talking about in this video Speaking of things that surprisingly hold well, we have the totem that I know you're curious about. What makes this interesting is that it has a logarithmic spiral on the back of the lobe because the cable comes out of the back, pulling on it. Now, totem does have on their website the complicated math associated with this cam, but no concrete number on how much force it actually is. So we're just going to pull on it. It's pushing even here. It's pushing even there. And the force pushing outward is 1.2 after we pulled 0.61. Now my favorite one for show and tell is this bad boy. Now I'm curious if we are going to get similar forces, though the cam angle might be the same, the lobe sizes are very different, and then the U-stem in which you pull is way off to the side and not centered like most cams. Wow, that's interesting. But what about the almighty tricam? We are going to have all the data, graphs, and charts from this episode in our master data sheet. And you can get that from our downloads page, which you get when you sign up for our email Saturday newsletter. And if you're already signed up, you can find that page at the bottom of every email I've sent you. Now, the tricam is not symmetrical, so the math is technically harder than cam math, which is theoretically simple. So I'm going to pull on this now and we are going to find out how much force outward it puts on compared to cams. And I'm going to go put that number in the data sheet. So you can go see that number right now if you go sign up right now or dig up the last email I sent you. Cheers. Vocabulary is a big part of the facade of intelligence. Because I feel smart just doing this. <laughs> wow, you can say so little with so many words. Words are neat.